This video was brought to you by the Intellectual Property School, where I'm going to teach you all my dirty tricks and secret ways on how to make money starting a YouTube channel, writing a book, selling online courses, and starting a podcast. And once you get these things, these are this this is a very low cost business that you can get into. You can get all this stuff, maybe spend twenty five hundred bucks, and position yourself where you can make five to fifteen thousand within six to twelve months. Once again, I'm going to be straight with you. You're not going to make any money right out the gate. It's not going to happen. You've got to build your audience. You've got to build your content. But once you get it built, six months to twelve months. You know, some people may take a, some people may do it quicker. Some people may take longer, but six to 12 months, you could be making five to 15,000. And for the average person, that's life changing money because the average person in this country brings home two to twenty five hundred dollars per month. That's what the average person makes and brings home. So go ahead, go below and enroll in the intellectual property school. What I'm doing is giving you 65 percent off for everyone that signs up and access to home economics, my financial management course. So you could take home economics until I start dripping content into intellectual property school. That's interesting. This has got to be great in the winter. What's going on, guys? Winter is coming. And winter is coming very quickly. I don't really want to see people suffer. But it's going to happen. There's going to be epic pain. There's going to be food insecurity, aka starving. There's going to be people evicted. There are going to be homelessness. There's going to be men. And I'm just sitting here looking. I recently put up a video where it is 100% clear as day looking at the math that Carl Rennefeld isn't a billionaire. And I had people who said, well, you know, I'm not saying he lied. Okay. Let's start here. A billion dollars is a fantastical sum of money. A billion dollars, if you had a billion dollars, just one, you could spend a million a year for 1,000 years. And let me talk about me, because I know what it takes to become a billionaire. I have no illusions or aspirations of me ever becoming a billionaire. I'm not even looking for that. I don't even, I mean, being a millionaire is perfectly fine for me, and you know, Many of you might be like, you selling, you should be going for the billion. And I'm beginning to see something with America that is deeply troubling. People would like a superficial facade of real life than real life. I'm in the building where the BBL is a procedure, it's a surgery that women get that gives them very pronounced hips and posture. I mean, there's so many of them around here. And these chicks aren't, they don't even look real. And I'm seeing that exaggerated, exaggerated proportions. I'm, I'm seeing it everywhere. Because like Carl, he just came on YouTube, like I'm a billionaire, no proof, no showing his broker, nothing. And people ate it up with the big spoon because everybody is looking for an easy come up. And this is the culling of America. Used to be people understood that they had to work hard. There was an understanding that they, you had to pay your dues. There was an understanding. Now, you have a multitude, thanks to YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, legitimately, you have a bunch of very young millionaires. And they make it look effortless. Let's talk about Graham Stephan. Graham Stephan, I'm not a fan. However, I will concede he works really hard. 
He has the Graham Stephan show. He has the Graham's, his Graham's channel, the ice. All right, running and managing three YouTube channels is a lot of damn work. So I'm not going to say he doesn't work. He works very, very hard. And, but many people see, was just sitting here shooting a video as simple and easy and they want that life. And this is why winter is coming so vigorously because people are in La La Land. They're in La La Land. They're like, I can become a billionaire because I just said so. With no, like one of the things I've studied and I've looked at the billionaire class in all of them, except for Sam Brinkman Fried, who became a billionaire through a crypto exchange the majority of the billionaires have been captains of industry. Now, Sam Brinkman Fried is a billionaire, is a legitimate billionaire due to his crypto holdings, but he owns a crypto exchange. Carl Fingen, he's just lying his ass off. And I'm, I'm beginning to see, and this kind of echoes back to my Moist Man video, that people want the best of the best of the best, sir. They want the best life. They want the best car. They want the best chick. And there's nothing wrong with that, except they don't want to work. I have seen video after video, fire movement. It's like, I want to retire by 30 because I don't want to work. I don't want to work. I've seen it over and over and over again. And this, escapism and fantasy into TikTok land, YouTube land, Instagram land. All of the people who are really making money are actually working, whether it be on YouTube. Literally, I saw an Instagram influencer. She and her friends were at a restaurant I was in, and this restaurant had a very unique wall. I literally saw these chicks take 50 photos, 50. And she's like, let's do it like this. Let's do it like she was working. It will. You see her Instagram thing and it just looks like she's standing there. But you didn't know that she took 50, 60 photos to get that one photo. And this is what's killing America. It's killing America. Like with the moist men. I have proven statistical data. If you would go approach a beautiful woman in person, you got a 35 percent chance of winning. That means if you approach three beautiful women, you're probably going to get one. No, I'm going to sit here at home and I'm going to participate in the female hate parade on YouTube. I'm going to keep it a buck. Most of the masculine men's channels on YouTube actually display a high level of hate for women, a very high level of weight because like if I'm in the street, and I see someone fall down, I'm going to run and try to pick them up. I'm not going to have joy or glee that someone that I don't know fell down. I would run over and try to help this person. And that's what healthy, mentally well-adjusted people do. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound very, very bad. I feel that most of the men who consume red pill, purple pill, black pill, Micto content are mentally ill because they're practicing antisocial behavior and they're getting away from the grand scheme. The grand scheme. There is a reason that God made you bigger and have more muscles than a woman. You are supposed to protect that woman. You're supposed to cover that woman. You're supposed to provide, protect, and cover women. That is your role, you stupid motherfucker. Nah, I don't want that. I just want to skeet and have no responsibility, none whatsoever. And I get mad because there's various levels of mental illness. You have the incels who can be provoked to violence because they can't get no pussy. And then you have the middle of the road, MGTOW red pill, throwing up red pill gang signs. I'm red pill. I'm, I'm consuming this red pill. I took the red pill. Throwing up gang signs. 
you're practicing antisocial behavior and you don't even know it. And this is that's a form of mental illness. And with mental illness, once you have a form of mental illness, it's just a slippery slope before you slide to a deeper level of mental illness. Because I have had conversation with men every time I put down something about getting married and I'm going to say something because I have worked. Let's be really, really clear. For me to have a rotation, it takes work. Uh, I hated starting from scratch because that meant sometimes months of not getting any pussy. Just keeping it a buck with you. So once I establish a rotation, I will start beginning on my second rotation while I have a current rotation because chicks fall out the frame. And one of the reasons that I've been able to have consistent rotations and enjoy myself sexually is because I work. I work. And many of you like, you got a pregnant girlfriend. I'm going to tell you something. That was a social media experiment. I don't have a pregnant girlfriend. That's a friend of mine who just happens to be pregnant. I don't have a pregnant girlfriend. I do have a girlfriend. I do have a girlfriend. And I'm going through the process of changing myself where I can be comfortable with one woman. Honestly, I have four. I have my main chick and I have three satellites. And I just, I'm letting one, I'm letting go one of my satellites this week and I'm going to acclimate because I got that R. Kelly, I got that R. Kelly tap, I got that R. Kelly tap like appetite. I like the fuck. I'm, a, I'm just keeping the buck. I like the fuck. There, there is something really nice about getting some good juicy pussy. Had some good juicy pussy this morning, two times. Two times. And I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. There ain't nothing better than having a submissive woman pleasing you. So one of the reasons that I've been able to pull these things off is I'm analytical and I work. And this is why winter is going to be so bad for so many Americans. You have the capacity to work, but you don't want to. You have the capacity, but you don't have the will. And I look at this and I, I just shake my head because so many people could be living a better life if they were willing to work and embrace the gauntlet. Now, what is the gauntlet? The gauntlet is a period of time when you're trying to do something new where it's just going to suck. When I started my Craigslist protocols, it sucked in the beginning. When I started my Craigslist marketing system, it sucked in the beginning. When I started the storage auction business, it sucked in the beginning. When I wrote my first book, it sucked in the beginning. When I started this YouTube channel, it sucked in the beginning. You see a consistent and common theme? You got to be strong enough to ride that shit out. But you're so weak. You're so mentally weak. You're so physically weak. You're just weak. And this is why winter is going to be killing people. You got someone out there because like, you know, I'm going to be making more videos about the, I, got, I got a playlist called Crypto Punks. I'm going to be making more videos about that. But winter is coming. People are going to want that fire. They're going to want that heat and they're going to look up and they're going to be 60, 65, 70 years old and they're going to look back at their life and they're going to have nothing but fucking regret. Nothing but regret. Like, I wish I had did this. I wish I had did this. I wish I had did this. Nothing but regret because you are so lazy. You don't have the will. And this is one of the fascinations with the crypto world. Hey, I can buy this coin. And I don't really have to do nothing. I can make a lot of money. That's it. You cannot tell me about the, the, the technical, the technical, and the use case, man, there's a handful of people who are on that tip. Most of you are for the money grab. But man, winter is coming. I just spent 
$16,000 on the bedroom set. I'll have it in September. And I tell you that not to impress you. I tell you that because the other day I spent like $20,000. And I don't do that all the time. I tell you that what is possible if you are willing to work? What is possible? What is, can be your life three years in the future? Once again, everybody wants it now. They want their crypto money now. They want their money. Like, uh, I'm really pleased with the folks who are signing up for intellectual property school. There's a lot of people who are signing up and I'm being honest, I'm like, you're looking at six to 12 months before you start making any money. But you can make a lot of money over time. And I got a lot of people signing up for intellectual property school. So that's really good. But winter is coming. It is coming. It's going to be like right now it's summer. Uh, I was out today and it was busy 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 everybody's out enjoying the summer and before you know it summer's gonna be over and it's gonna be fall then it's gonna be winter and then we're gonna go into the third quarter of the recession and then we're gonna see diesel shortage we're gonna see food shortage we're gonna see now this is something else too uh, when I leave here and let me tell you my plans I'm probably gonna stay here two years and when I leave here I'm buying the house because people have gotten ridiculous with rent. I mean, it is stupid what I'm seeing places rent for. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I got a chunk of money that's kind of like my, my attitude money. That's kind of my fuck you money. It's in an account. I don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. So to get this house, as long as I'm here, I'm going to create new money and I'm gonna save up and I'm gonna pay cash for that house with new money without touching my established fund because then I will have my established fund and then I will have a house that is paid off and I'll be doing my thing. Now, that may sound fantastical to you. That may sound impossible to you. Remember, I'm the guy that spent $200,000 on two cars in one month, cash money. I got the receipts, I got the titles to prove it. So. I am not scared of setting big, bodacious goals. And I'm going to tell you that it's going to be a million dollar house because I have become acclimated to this lifestyle. Like I was looking at a house that they wanted like way too much money for. It was a crummy neighborhood. The houses were too damn close together. And I was like, people are paying this in rent. This house was going for what my house used to cost. My house was 3,500 bucks per month. This house was $3,400. It was a dump. It was like, it looked like a craftsman bungalow. I was like, really? I am not renting. The, I, when I come out here, I'm not renting. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Because uh, rent is going to remain high. And what you're going to see is the advancement of the hobosexuals. I've had so many people try to move in with me, it ain't funny. I ain't even telling y'all all the stories. I had this one girl who brought suitcases, not a suitcase, but suitcases. And I was like, where are you going with those? She's like, oh, I just want to have some stuff here when I come. And I'm like, look, you're not moving in. Just, just nip that right in the butt. It's like, you're not moving in. Uh, if a woman is living with me, know that I am in love with her and she's very close to becoming my wife. I am not moving in a fuck buddy. I am not moving in a fuck toy. Not doing it. It's going to have to be someone who is useful to me. And this is one of the things with my rotation. I'm going to share this with you. I got someone who's probably going to leapfrog my main girl because my main girl, she's been a little distance and this chick, and this is what's so funny. And I'm going to speak to y'all because we folk. 
my main girl is built like a hooker. She got, she ain't black, but she's got a sister's body. She got the booty, she got the titties, she got all that. Pretty toes, pretty long hair, she got all that. And the girl who has moved up in the ranks is kind of skinny. You know, she got little boobs, she got a sexy little walk, sexy little walk, long hair, and um, she is moving up in the ranks because she's useful. She's helpful. I was like, the shit she did around here the last few days, I'm just sitting there like, damn, I can get used to this. So one of the things that you have to understand when you become a man, because like I'm getting ready to hire someone, I got to write the ad for Indeed. I'm getting ready to um, do a lot of stuff. Like for me, I decided to fix the cars because I get these people and the car has issues and they want to go extremely low and I'm like sick of that shit. So I've literally, I've not been trying to sell the cars. I've literally got one, two, three cars in the shop right now, getting them fixed and I'm gonna raise the price because these people, once again, like, one car, it just needed brakes. And they were telling me, oh, it needs this, this, that's like $3,000 worth of work. Would you take two? Fuck no, I'm not gonna take two, clown. I'm asking 10. I'm not gonna take two because some warning lights came on. And this is another thing that I'm seeing. Everyone is looking for the killer deal. Like, um, I had one car that eight people came to look at and because the renter had dogged it out i actually sold that car for 2500 just to get rid of it because i was tired of people coming to look at it and leaving it because they had so many issues and i'm beginning to see a lot a lot of people do not understand effort and sweat sweat equity winter is going to be so bad winter is going to be Like what I put up about the dude and the seven dollars and gas and the Range Rover and the lady that got evicted. Multiply that by millions of people who are going through those same circumstances. And you're gonna see it in the news. Murder rate is still escalating. Homeless rate is escalating. Domestic violence is escalating. And I'm about to make a prediction. Someone that you know is going to be selling pussy. Because it's going to get that bad. You got these chicks out here who are working these minimum wage jobs or working in restaurants and stuff. And they're working 40, 50 hours a week and they just can't make it. And they're going to get ready to lay on their back and take that dick and they're going to sell some pussy. I would say the number of sex workers is going to explode. And this is interesting. Like, have you ever heard of Chatterbait? It is a website with a bunch of cam girls. And I kind of look at it and I don't see the appeal. It's just some girl diddling herself with a dildo or they have fucked me. I'm like, what is it? Because see, I like real pussy. I don't like to look at women and imagine it. Oh yeah, baby, oh yeah, yeah. I don't do that shit. I don't masturbate. You know why I don't masturbate? I got holes to handle that cum. It's like, why I won't masturbate when she can handle that? But the number of sex workers, cam girls, sugar babies, escorts, is going to skyrocket. It's going to skyrocket because these women are working really hard they're doing what they can, and it ain't enough. It's simply not enough. And then, I ain't even gonna talk about the bisexual, homosexual, because there was a, a friend of mine who kinda sorta admitted something. He said when he was in college, he did a little escorting, and I was like, you were a gigolo? And he said, no. I was like, what did you do? 
it's like, you know, I did my thing. And he was very sketchy about it. And we finally got the truth. He was having homosexual sex, even though he claimed not to be homosexual. This dude is married with three children. And I was like, were you the catcher or were you the pitcher? And he said both. So this dude got fucked up the ass and was fucking other dudes up the ass. And I was like, does your wife know? He said, no, she's unaware. Ladies, I got a question for you. If you had a man and you found out that he engaged in homosexual sex, how would that make you feel? Put that in the comments. How would that make you feel? And I was just like, oh, you're going to see a lot of dudes selling ass. They're going to be the pitcher. They're going to be the receiver. They're going to be doing it because um, winter is coming. And it doesn't have to be a cold winter. It doesn't have to be. But I'm seeing that so many people like the fascination with cryptocurrency. I've done a deep analysis of cryptocurrency. The vast majority of cryptocurrencies held by 7% of cryptocurrency holders, which means that the majority of cryptocurrency holders don't hold a significant portion. And then I had someone and like, I kind of understand it's like we don't use real numbers because you can set yourself up to be robbed, I guess hacked. Because you know, I don't have any cryptocurrency, I just have cash. And I protected my cash because I'm gonna tell you I protected my cash. My, my stash, my major stash is in an account that doesn't have checks, doesn't have a debit card. And no one's ever seen that checking account number other than my bank. So it would be virtually impossible for someone to get in there and steal my money because I don't expose that. Like, I'll give you the setup. I got several business accounts. I got one account that has a debit card, has checks. That account has the least amount. It has like 1500 bucks in it. And then I got my other accounts that don't have debit cards, don't have checking, and no one has ever seen these, account, these, these, these accounts. No one's ever seen them. They can't get at them. And that's my protection. I don't know with cryptocurrency and the hacking, I don't know how easy that is. But I asked that question because most of, you know, many moist men lie. They lie about the pussy they didn't get. They lie about their accomplishments. Here on YouTube and on the internet, you can Google what I have done. And let's go back to the October incident, my other social experiment. Like I said, my girl, I don't have a pregnant girlfriend. That was just a social experiment. I, was, I put that out there to see what the um, nutcases would do with it. And essentially, they didn't even touch that. I don't have a pregnant girlfriend, but my first social experiment, you will see a number of videos by dusty, low life, non accomplished people. You'll see a ton of those, but not one motherfucker will challenge my business acumen because it's impeccable. Anton Daniels, there's a ton of videos calling his punk ass out a ton of them because they're like some ain't right here. I mean, literally. Google fake Anton Daniels, fake guru, Google it. You'll see all these videos from people to, they're like, he ain't real. I, I honestly, I, I don't think he's real. But out of all that shit that came out with me, you cannot find anyone trying to challenge my business acumen because it's impeccable. It's fucking impeachable because this shit's real. I had a comment the other day. It's like, you know, the fact that you're telling people that they're not going to make the kind of money because see, if I was a, a grifter, I would just put it out there and not, not mention that the average person is not going to make the kind of money I make. Just put it out there. I would sell more courses. I know I would. But see, here's the thing. I don't want you to be a one-time customer. I want you to buy another product. And if I go ahead and start the relationship by lying to you, you ain't gonna buy shit else from me in the future. I've literally got people who have bought every fucking product that I put out. Anton Daniels can't say that shit with his Patreon. And there's some other people who, um, interestingly enough, 
There are people challenging their business acumen because they don't talk about business. I got the Art of Profit podcast. There are nine episodes and I came up, I, I got 80 podcast episodes written down, things I'm gonna talk about, and by the end of the month, I'm gonna have 100 topics. Because I'm, I'm about business. I live that business life, I breathe that business life. I'm about that money. I'm 100% congruent and true with that. And I try to share that, but so many people in America, like, once again, I, I, I put up a challenge to Carl, $100,000 if you could prove you're a billionaire. I am not even worried about losing my 100K. You wanna know why? Because he ain't gonna do it. He ain't gonna even mention it. I mean, his people could tell him he ain't gonna touch it because he ain't a fucking billionaire. I know this, I did the math. This dude was a cashier. Then for him to be a billionaire, he would have to spend 10 million when Bitcoin was $1,100. He would have to have 15,000 Bitcoin to be a billionaire when Bitcoin was $68,000. Now that Bitcoin's 20, he would need 45,000 Bitcoin. Men lie, women lie, math doesn't lie. Math is extremely honest. This motherfucker's just straight up lying. They're telling you invest in crypto while they have an active cash flow in business. Graham Stephan, meet Kevin, invest, invest, invest while they have active cash flow businesses. Graham Stephan has his main channel, he has the iced coffee hour, and he has another. He's getting three YouTube checks. Or he may all have it dumping into one AdSense account. This dude could literally be getting half a million a month or more from YouTube. But hey, don't do as I do, do as I say. America, you in trouble. You are in trouble. You are in trouble if you don't change your ways. If you don't change your ways, if you do not step up to the plate and become like, once again, I have a course, Home Economics. And a lot of people, once again, in the beginning, there were people piling in. And now, you know, a lot too many people, because a lot of people don't want to sit there and manage their money correctly. They want to make more money so they can trick off, buy, like, I see all these videos, like, I bought a Bugatti, like, once again, all these YouTubers who have these massive channels, they have a massive YouTube income. I have friends who make a million dollars a month from YouTube. Million a month. I got one friend, he's like, man, my ta he's like, my taxes are stupid. Because he, he, you know, and I've tried to school him. I was like, you need to get some more businesses because this man is paying 400000 per million. And he makes a million per month. So he's going to pay $5 million in taxes this year off of $12 million. And I was like, man, you, you got to do some stuff. You, you got to go ahead and get yourself some deductions. You know, I'm trying to school him. But once again, you know, he's used to doing it the way he's doing it. But man, winter is coming because people don't want to do right. And it's like, I can preach, I can show you, I can illustrate, I can give you good counsel, but you going to do what the, you know, like the Hodge twins, back in the day, the Hodge twins, you going to do what the fuck you want to do. That, that's pretty much it. I don't care what I say, you going to do what the fuck you want to do, whether it makes sense or not. Make sense or not, you're gonna do what you wanna do. You're gonna do what you wanna do. And a lot of you are gonna suffer. You're really gonna suffer. And shout out to the people who are actually talking about how much crypto they have, because once again, they're confirming my thesis. The average person doesn't have a lot of crypto. It simply doesn't. They don't have millions of dollars of crypto. Like I said, I've done a deep dive analysis. 
most of the big chunks of crypto are held by a few hands, like seven, eight percent of the crypto holding market. They own like 90 some percent of the crypto. These hedge funds, these businesses, individuals, you every now and then you might have someone who bought Bitcoin eight, ten years ago and held on to it. You will have those people and those people have done very, very well. But the average person, uh, no, no. And once again, this is my thesis, and I'm gonna say it again. If you start a small business, a profitable, successful small business, that will put you in a better situation than buying Bitcoin. You wanna know why? Because once you, like, let's go ahead and talk about my YouTube business. This camera has been paid for that camera has been paid for, the computer's been paid for, the laptop. That, that, that shit was paid for years ago. So it is actually costing me zero to produce this video. I have no hard cost. Yet this video is going to make money and it's going to get people to my online course. And it's not costing me anything. So... This is how many businesses set up, unless you have a business like trucking, like Toe Piglet just went out and said he's going out of business because his insurance costs have become untenable. Um, unless you have a business with high overhead, I don't have a high overhead business. The highest overhead business I ever had was the storage auction business, and that was pretty much the control. I had $2,500 for this warehouse, I had $1,500 for the other warehouse, I had 1500 for the, the uh, truck lease, and then whatever I bought. And I typically spent 15 to 20,000 per month. So my overhead was about 25,000. In a bad month, we would do 56. That 50, 60,000, that was a really bad month. A good month, we'll do 70 to 90. That was, you know, bad month was 50,000. And we still doubling our money. Still doubling our money. So, once again, man, America, winter's coming. Winter is coming.